All right, welcome back. This is part two of notes number 40. We are starting at example problem 13-1. As we look at this problem, calculate the hydrogen ion concentration in a solution where the hydroxide ion concentration is 3.14 times 10 to the minus five molar. So just to help in terms of problem solving strategies, we can do things like circle the information that we're given, underline the information that we're looking for. And that should hopefully help us uh, lead us to, there has to be some kind of relationship between these two things. And for us, that relationship is right here. The hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide ion concentration equals the ionization constant for water. Uh, we want to rearrange this equation, right? So we have an equation with three variables. As long as we know two, we can solve for the third. So rearranging to solve for what we're looking for, we're going to have the autoionization constant for water divided by the concentration of hydroxide, which has been given. We plug that information in. 1 times 10 to the minus 14 is that autoionization constant divided by 3.14 times 10 to the minus 5. Now, looking at this concentration, uh, we can see that, well, I'm going to get to that later. Go ahead and divide that. We get our answer. All right. Now, the last part of this question is, is this acidic, is it basic, or is it neutral? So we're going to ask you to compare the information that's given for the hydroxide and the information that's given about the hydrogen ion and make a determination. Now, this is really sometimes challenging for students. We have to recognize we see times 10 to the minus 5, and we see times 10 to the minus 10. And a lot of times, students are going to say, this is bigger. But remember, that negative sign means that this is very, very small. So times 10 to the minus 10 is much, much smaller than times 10 to the minus 5. So this concentration is bigger. So the hydroxide ion concentration in this situation is greater than the hydrogen ion concentration, which means that this solution is basic. All right, let me erase and move on. Um, these are some practice problems that you're going to be doing. So remember, 13-1 um, is a model problem for you to use as you're solving these three examples. Calculations with the pH scale. There we go. Okay, so the pH scale helps us measure the strengths of acids and bases. And remember our seven, a pH of seven is neutral, of exactly seven. So if it's 6.999, that would be acidic. And if it's 7.1, whatever, then that would be basic. Um, the, the, as you go from seven this way, the more we go towards one, the stronger the acid. As we go from seven this way, the more we go from seven, the stronger the base. Um, pH is, by definition, the pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So it's all about the hydrogen ion concentration. There's our definition. pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. Um, in neutral water, the concentration in neutral water, everybody knows neutral water, pH of seven, the hydrogen ion concentration is one times 10 to the minus seven. Here's how you can calculate the pH. So we can put our concentration of hydrogen ion right in here. So we have, that means that pH equals the negative log of 1.0 times 10 to the minus seven, which if I do that calculation comes out to be the pH of seven. Uh, again, exactly seven. 13.2, calculate the pH of the following solutions. So if the hydrogen ion concentration is 1.5 times 10 to the minus one molar, what is the pH? We have been given the hydrogen ion concentration, so we're going to use the definition of the hydrogen of pH, which is pH equals the negative log. We're going to put in our hydrogen ion concentration here, and we're going to plug it into our calculators 
and we will find that the pH is 0 0.82. What if the hydrogen ion concentration is 6.48 times 10 to the minus 13? Um, what is the pH going to be? So again, we've been given the hydrogen ion concentration, so we're gonna plug that information into the definition. So we're gonna say pH equals the negative log of 6.48 times 10 to the minus 13, or the pH is 12.2. Why don't you try this one on your own? Make sure to grab your calculators and practice because you're going to have to be able to do this on your own. Stop the video now. All right, welcome back. So I asked you to go ahead and see if you could calculate the pH of this particular hydrogen ion concentration. So showing up pH of, did you get 7.280? That's the correct answer. Try this one. Now, oops, are you not gonna go, I have to go through, okay. All right, welcome back. The pH is three. Now, when you get to this situation, I'm gonna have to go through this. Can I just show you this? Uh, pH, and maybe you remember this from math class, equals the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. All right, now, uh, if the pH equals 1.0 times 10 to the minus three. Now, you don't have to do this anymore, but I want you to understand why we can start to make some generalizations about numbers like these, all right? So we're gonna use the distributive property in, of logs in order to solve this without a calculator, and again, you don't have to solve this without a calculator, but it's important for you to understand something about this calculation because it's gonna make your life easier in the long run. Anyway, using the negative properties of logs, we're gonna have the log of 1.0 plus the log of 10 to the minus three. Now, if you grab your calculator right now and you plug in and hit log of one, you will find that the log of one is always going to be zero. So that's gonna be zero. And the log of 10 raised to a power is that power. So that would be negative three. And surely we can add zero plus negative three. So we have pH equals negative, and negative times a negative is a positive. I hope you can see that. So when we look at a number like this, if you understand how this the calculation is done, then you can look at that one and you go, hey, the log of one is zero. The log of 10 to the minus three is gonna be negative three. A negative times a negative is a positive. This is going to be a pH of three. With that in mind, look at this number, kind of similar. What is the pH of this solution going to be? Stop the video now and see if you know it. Well, hopefully you do, it should be four. What is the pH of this solution? Correctly, five. Oh, let me get rid of this. So note the pattern. pH is a logarithmic scale. Every change of one pH uh, means a concentration is 10 times more or 10 times less. That's an important thing. Pay attention to that, that's always very important. All right, calculations with POH. Well, there is another scale, and it is the POH scale. But the POH scale isn't about hydrogen ion, it's about the hydroxide ion. So POH is like pH, but it uses the hydroxide ion instead. And take a look, the POH equals the negative log of, not the hydrogen ion concentration, but hydroxide. So calculations involving acids and bases are not difficult, but you have to pay attention to the information that you're given. Watch out, am I given hydrogen ion or am I given hydroxide ion? And then what you can go from there. So another important calculation is the fact that pOH and pH are tied to the number 14, right? That, can be, this, this, that equation can be very helpful. 
So problem 13-3 says calculate the pH and the pOH for the following. Look at what they've given us. They've given us the hydrogen ion. And there are things we can do with the hydrogen ion. From this, I know I can calculate pH. And once I have pH, I can use this equation to calculate pOH. Again, thinking about how am I going to get to what I want? Uh, so that's my solution. So pH is negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. We're going to plug that in. We're going to grab our calculators. We're going to find that the pH is 9.46. I'm halfway to done. The other thing now, I need to calculate the pOH. So now I'm going to use this equation here. And here's my equation. We're going to write the equation. If you haven't noticed, as you work with these kinds of problems, we want to make sure that we're always writing the equations that we're using. We're always going to rearrange the equation to solve for what we're looking for. So what is 14 minus 9.46? And we find that the pOH is 4.54. So we're going to have two, uh, by the way, we're going to have two different for this one. We're going to have a box answer here and a box answer here, or highlight depending on uh, what your teacher requests of you. All right, so now you have the same situation down here at the bottom. But again, remember that idea, pay attention to what you're given. As we look, this time we have not been given the hydrogen ion concentration, we've been given hydroxide. Is there anything we can do with that? What do you think we can do? Well, we can use this equation. Since we have the hydroxide ion concentration, can we calculate the pOH? Yes. And once we have the pOH, can we use this equation to solve for pH? That is our strategy, and now let's put it into action. Writing the equation, plugging in the information, we now have our pOH. Writing the equation, rearrange the equation, plug in our information, we now have the pH, and lastly, you need to box or highlight two answers because you have two questions. These are your practice problems. So again, the, the problem before is a model problem for these problems. Converting from pH to hydrogen ion or pOH to hydroxide ion. Um, you're going to convert from hydrogen ion to pH using this equation. So if I if, I am, if I've got the hydrogen ion concentration, then I can calculate pH. But what if I have pH? Can I calculate hydrogen ion concentration? Of course you can. Um, converting from pH to hydrogen ion requires the opposite. The opposite of the negative log of x is 10 to the negative x. Thus, the formula for hydro, uh, concentration of hydrogen ion and concentration of hydroxide ion are. So again, these are also very helpful. So if I have been given the pH, and I, the question is what's the hydrogen ion concentration, I'm gonna use this equation. So we're gonna take 10, we're gonna raise it to the negative pH, and that will give us our hydrogen ion concentration. Well, what if I'm given the pOH? Well, if you're given the pOH, then you can calculate the hydroxide ion concentration. All right, a sample of blood has a pH of 7.41. Um, find the pOH, the hydrogen ion, and the hydroxide ion. So as we look, we have been given the pH. Right? Let me circle that. I'm going to circle, circle, the pH. What do we want to know? We want to find the pOH. We want to find the hydrogen ion concentration and the hydroxide ion concentration. With this information, what can I find? Stop the video now. Answer that question. All right, hopefully with this information, you can look right here. If I know the pH, I can find the hydrogen ion concentration. And that's exactly where we're going to start. 
We're going to write our equation. There's nothing to rearrange here. We're going to take our uh, equation. We're going to plug in the pH that we've been given. We're going to use the inverse log. And again, remember to put that negative sign in front of your pH. This is negative log or inverse log, and you have to hit your negative and the pH. And you find that your hydrogen ion concentration is 3.89 times 10 to the minus 8 molar. So we have solved this. Now from here, there are actually several ways you can go. Uh, one way that we have chosen to go is to use this equation, right? Because do I have a pH? And rearranging this equation, would it be easy for me to solve for the POH, one of my other answers? Uh, yes, and we plug in that, and we find that our POH is 6.59. Now that we have the pOH, the last thing we have left is to find the hydroxide ion concentration. So for that, we're going to use this equation here. All right, so we're going to have the hydroxide ion concentration. We're going to take 10 raised to the, again, negative pOH. We're going to plug in the pOH that we have, and we're going to find that our hydroxide ion concentration is 2.57 times 10 to the minus 7. And again, how many boxes do we have on this problem? Three or highlights, depending on what your teacher is asking. Okay. All right, lastly, this is quite a useful tool. Um, remember that when we are at home with our distance learning, that all of our tests are going to be open book, open notes. Something like this is a concept map and it kind of helps you with, well, gosh, if I'm given the hydrogen ion concentration, what can I do with it? Now, arrows pointing to you, that's not something you can do with hydrogen ion, but arrows pointing away. So if I have hydrogen ion concentration, I can calculate the pH. Now I'm looking at this arrow. Notice this is a double-sided arrow, so that means we can go back and forth. But anyway, come here, hydrogen ion, if I want to go to pH, that means I have to use this equation on this side. If I'm here, since I have a double-sided arrow, it means I can go back and forth. If I want to go from here to here, I'm going to use this equation, right? If I go from hydrogen ion to hydroxide, then what can I do with hydroxide? Well, arrow up, I can calculate the pOH using this equation. So take a look at this graphic. It's going to be very helpful to you. And good luck. Asses and bases, not hard. Pay attention to the information that's given. Have a great day. All right, so useful graphic, make sure you use it. All right, measuring the pH of a solution. Um, we use chemical indicators. So we take things and we drop it in. And maybe you've done this in biology with cabbage juice. A lot of times that's a common experiment done in bio. But indicators are chemicals that change colors when the pH changes. Um, each indicator changes over a narrow range. And so you can see this little graphic here, very helpful. All of these are indicators. And this indicator here, as you can see, here's my pH scale, is not going to be a good indicator for a base. And that's because it changes color at lower pHs. But as we go along, let's see, where's phenolphthalein? Phenolphthalein is right up here. This is, pro this, if we were in class doing a lab, this is what we'd be using. We use phenolphthalein because it changes from clear in an acid to pink pretty close to seven. So um, that's a good one to use. Uh, each indicator, okay, we did that. Combining multiple chemicals um, creates an indicator that covers a much broader range of va values. That's not anything we're gonna do, but maybe if you continue on in chemistry, uh, you'll be doing things like that. Um, there are electronic tools that help us measure pH. We call them pH probes, and those are quite handy. Or we can even use, as you see right here, we have some indicator tape, um, and you can just do it like a dip with that. The electronic pH meters measures the electrical resistance to calculate the pH of a solution. I believe that's the end of these notes. Have a great day. See you soon.